Good morning. As we enter this uh, unprecedented Cape Caribbean Studies workshop, we are just allowing all of our students to enter. We have some 128 of you online. There are over 300 of you who have registered. We are also streaming live via Facebook. And we are happy to see you all online. All right, let me introduce myself. I'm Dr. Sonia Stanley Naya. I'm director and senior lecturer of the Institute on Caribbean Studies. My background is one in geography. Some people um, wonder, well, how did you come to cultural studies? Well, my background is in geography also in sociology and my PhD is in cultural studies. In fact, I served for a little bit as um, assistant chief examiner for Cape Caribbean studies for many years. I am no longer involved, but I'm pleased to be involved in this way where we can bring you a Cape um, Caribbean studies marathon. Now, I wanted to just tell you briefly a little bit about the Institute of Caribbean Studies before I hand over to our lecturer for today, Melissa Beckford. The Institute of Caribbean Studies was established in 1987. We are the home at the university in cultural studies and applied cultural studies. And we are a cutting edge institute. Why do I say we are cutting edge? We are the only site on the university's Mona campus offering programs around the cultural and creative industries. And if you've never heard about the cultural and creative industries, these are, are the, the industries that are part of the orange economy. And, and, if, and if, I, I, I hope some bright students have written those words down. Let me repeat, the cultural and creative industries, or in some jurisdictions referenced as the orange economy. Now, the, the most important thing about the orange economy is that this is a trillion dollar industry. All right. We have from music to film and fashion. All of these things are very much a part of the cultural and creative industries. And within the Institute of Caribbean Studies, there are three undergraduate programs, the entertainment, um, entertainment and cultural enterprise management program the cultural and creative industries major, and the newly established music and performance studies major. Now, the students who complete um, these undergraduate degrees successfully have the option of doing a graduate degree. And there are three degree programs at the graduate level. A student can complete the Master of Arts in Cultural Studies, the Master of Philosophy in Cultural Studies, or the, um, the doctor of philosophy in cultural studies. And I'll tell you a little bit about me as well. I am actually the first graduate out of the PhD, the doctor of philosophy program in cultural studies in the Institute of Caribbean Studies, way back when. I won't tell you my age, way, 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 way back when. So the Institute is this site of cultural studies and applied cultural studies. And I hope Many of you will want to do some more investigation outside of this workshop and, and feel free to join us, feel free to come and see us, feel free to apply to these programs if you have an interest in the arts, in, if you have an interest in the humanities. We are um, very much here at your service to provide for your future education. So I know that you're going to enjoy this workshop today. Um, sorry, we are not able to see you physically um, in a face-to-face -face context. We held a workshop for your teachers. Some of you would have heard about this workshop from your teachers and it was a fantastic workshop. We wanted, of course, to host you face-to-face, -face, but we will do that in the coming um, months, um, certainly not you, but some, some of your friends who are coming behind you who will want to um, do Caribbean studies or will have to do Caribbean studies at Cape as well. But as for you all, we hope to welcome you to the University of the West Indies in September 
some of you perhaps would have had initial offers and we know that you will come to do your best in the same way that we wish you well in your Cape Caribbean Studies exam. So thank you very much. Um, enjoy your day. Um, I'm going to hand you over now to Miss Melissa Beckford, who is your guide and able guide for your workshop today. Thank you very much. Good morning to everyone. I will just give a few minutes before I begin to miss Ms. Ross Laws. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for participating in this Cape Caribbean Studies Online Marathon. My name is Betty Yin Ross Laws. I am the Senior Administrative Assistant of the Institute of Caribbean Studies, as well as the coordinator for this online marathon. I am delighted to introduce to you the lecturer for this session, Mrs. Melissa Beckford Simpson. Mrs. Beckford Simpson hails originally from the parish of St. Mary, where she attended Oroka Bessa Primary and St. Mary High School, where she excelled as head prefect in both institutions. Though she was from a poor rural background, she was determined to excel, and this she did, not only in academics, but also in core curricular activities like debating, 4-H, music, speech, and drama. She earned a place at the University of the West Indies and despite several odds, graduated in 2010 with a BA first class honors in history. She was the only student in that discipline to obtain a first class honor in that year. Mrs. Beckford Simpson went on to pursue the postgraduate diploma in history education at the Department of Education at the University of the West Indies. Mrs. Beckford Simpson is also expected to commence the MPhil Cultural Studies program at the Institute of Caribbean Studies at the University of the West Indies in September 2020. She has also been involved in the delivery of Cape Caribbean Studies session on TVJ during the period when school was out. Melissa has taught at both Merle Grove High School and Jamaica College and has been a staff member of Alpha Academy for the past nine years. She marked CSEC history, social studies, and Cape history and all components of Caribbean studies with the CXC for a number of years. She has served as a board member of Alpha Primary School and is the current president of the History Teachers Association of Jamaica, Jamaica Teachers Association, Kingston North Central District President, and the Communications Director of the Save the Children campaign, which is a charity organization. She is also co-founder of Expert Educational Services which caters to all subjects in the humanities. Mrs. Beckford Simpson now resides in Clarendon and is married to Mr. Dennis Simpson and has two children. She is very actively involved in her church. Please join me in welcoming Mrs. Beckford Simpson. Students, I wish you all the best in your Cape Caribbean Studies examination. And I am sure that this marathon will be beneficial to you and will help you to be successful in your examination. Have a productive and wonderful day. Thank you for that 
very warm introduction, Mrs. Ross Laws. I am you are welcome. very humbled and I am very happy that I am able to give up my time today in this Cape Caribbean Studies Marathon. Now, we know that these are unprecedented times, students, and there, as we come closer to the exams, I know that you may be having some feelings of anxiety. And why not? You know, rightly so. So many things have happened that are not the norm. However, today we want to help you to be much more prepared than you are now. Of course, the format of the exam this year will be multiple choice. And so we'll be focusing on multiple choice today in this marathon. And the aim is that at the end of it, you will feel very, very prepared to answer and deal with the questions that may come. All right. So the aim is to get, get rid of some of those doubts and anxieties. And at the end of today, you should leave feeling a bit more confident than you have been. All right. So here's the format for today. We have two hours to complete, and we intend to complete the better part of at least six past, paper, past papers, starting from the most recent one, 2019, all the way to 2013, right? So we will aim to complete all of those. We'll see how much of that we can complete. And then at the very last note, we will look at the specimen paper for the new syllabus of 2017. So here's the format that we will take. Now for this first part, I will just be going through with you a PowerPoint presentation that I prepared for you to master the multiple choice, all right? So we will do that in a very short period of time and then we'll move from there into a very short poll. So you need to pay attention, all right? And then after that, now we will go right into the multiple choice papers beginning with 2019 and we'll see how much of that we can complete for the better part of an hour or so. And then at the very end, for the last half hour or so, we will look at the specimen paper. And this is a, your chance now to become interactive, to give your answers because by then you should become very, very confident based on what we would have done. And you will then use the raise and feature to indicate your answers and you will be allowed to give your answers. Now, don't be shy, build your confidence as we go along because we want you to interact with us. And I want to know that you are learning something and you're becoming confident, okay? So that is the format that we will take this morning, all right? Now, there are two polls, so after I finish the one hour of running through at least as many of the past papers as we can, then you will be asked to do another poll and you'll be given a very short window of time within which to do so. And then we will feel those answers and go through those answers, all right? So we want to make it as, as interactive as possible. Please do not feel that this is just a complete lecture. You are able to indicate any questions that you may have or suggestions to that you may have in the chat and with the question and answer individual and those questions will be taken after we have done each segment of this presentation. All right, so let me say a warm welcome to you this morning to our Cape Caribbean Studies Marathon. And let me say we're in Jamaica, but the UE is for the Caribbean, not just for Jamaica. So I want to give a special shout out to all my peeps from across the Caribbean. Thank you for joining us this morning. It is our pleasure to host you. All right, so we will begin with the PowerPoint presentation on mastering the multiple choice. Okay, so you should be looking at the screen 
that says Caribbean studies mastering the multiple choice. And we're going to see if we can learn the techniques of exactly how to do so. All right. So now the first thing we need to understand is that multiple choice needs a brain. Yes, multiple choice needs a brain. All right. So some people feel that it is a no brainer. Not so. It needs a brain. So you need to be thinking carefully in order to do multiple choice. And we're going to come back to that brain. All right. So first of all, let us debunk some of the myths about multiple choice. All right. The first myth about multiple choice is that multiple choice is easy. Multiple choice, contrary to popular belief, is not necessarily easy. And especially at Cape, no multiple choice is easy. All right. So don't think that this is something I can just walk over. I can just do. It will not take much out of me. I don't need to study. I don't do, need to do much preparation. That is not true. Multiple choice is not necessarily easy. So let's we're debunking that myth, myth number one. Myth number two, there is a standard random formula to select the answers. All right, there's no such thing. There's no such thing. Now, some persons always feel that they have it made and they, 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 there's a formula. So you, you know, in Jamaica, we say, eeny, meeny, miny, mo, or something like that. And then we, you know, we pick out and say, okay, so it's, we said A last time, no, it's B, no, it's C, no, it's D. Okay, no, I have never, I've, I've sat many exams and done many multiple choice questions, and I don't know that there is any standard random formula to select the answers. I don't know of it, all right? No, the answers are completely random. They are just completely random, all right? So because C was chosen before does not mean that C cannot be the answer for the next question so you need to be careful of having that in your mind and the guessing and so on you need to be rid of that all right so that is myth number two uh, there's a standard random formula to select the answers this is not true all right so how do we master the multiple choice now all right in mastering the multiple choice it is important to be very knowledgeable and familiar with content. Now, if you do not know content, then you are not able to do multiple choice properly because multiple choice requires knowledge of content. Now, while with the paper two questions, you are able to give your understanding, more or less your opinion, your take on an issue. That is not the case of multiple choice. There is one, there are four responses usually, and only one of those responses is correct, right? So you have to be very knowledgeable. And the thing about multiple choice is that it tests aspects of the content of the syllabus that perhaps would not be tested if you were given a paper two or a paper three, right? It gives some very nitty gritty, some very specific things are asked in the multiple choice. And if you do not know your content, then you can be floored if you don't know, all right? So you have to first know your content. Now, all of this time that you have been home, you should be using the time, apart from completing your SDAs, you should have been using the time to go over the content. Now, we know that the Cape Caribbean Studies content is perhaps the bulkiest content of the entire Cape. And so there's a lot of things to go through. No, the content covers everything to do with the Caribbean society and culture. So we start with Caribbean society and culture. We cover issues like media. We cover sports, right? Those are issues that would not necessarily be covered on the other subject areas. We cover gender. We cover, cover education. We cover health. We cover development. We cover globalization. You name it. And this, the, the syllabus for Caribbean studies covers it. So it's a wide range of content. So you need to read widely, students, and have your content so that you are able to answer those questions. The second thing is to speak out key terms in the questions. 
that will help you to answer, all right? So you may be given a question and per, the question makes a difference. The, the response that you give, that will eventually be the answer, makes a difference in terms of dates, for example. So granted, this is not history. History is one of the subject areas that is included in Caribbean studies. But yes, there are in fact some dates related. Take for example, questions related to the Federation. The question may ask you, or it may put the date in the question itself. It may say, what was, what, what was one of the main reasons for the failure of the 1958 West Indies Federation? All right, so the date there helps you to understand what the question is asking. All right, names of individuals. Suppose the question asks you about George Beckford's theory. Which of the following is George Beckford's theory, right? So you would then know based on the name that is involved that what the answer should be. As against if the question had asked you for Edward Kumar Brathway, all right? So you then need to look at these important things such as dates and names in order to arrive at the answers, all right? So begin, once you see the question, begin to pick out all of those important dates and names and concepts that will lead you to remembering what it is that the answer to the question is. All right, so we move on. You use the process of elimination to discard the most unlikely answer first, and then you work your way to the correct answer. All right, so one of the things that we need to understand is that all multiple choice questions are specifically structured. They are not, the responses that are given are not just random, right? The responses that are given are on levels, all right? So for example, the a level one type, and students, I'm giving you the insight, you know, and I'm giving you the insight, so you need to pay attention. On level one, you would have perhaps a nonsensical answer, right? An answer that just does not fit. So you eliminate that one first. And then on a level two, you may see a response that says that you there's something that you know, but you do not know enough to apply. A level three type answer now, notice you're coming closer to the response. A level three type answer says that you are familiar with the content, but you just have not placed this, this, this specific one to the specific question, all right? That's what this one says. But level four is the correct answer. You, it demonstrates that you know your content. It demonstrates that you have placed the specific question to and the specific response to it, all right? So I'm giving you those insights there. So you eliminate first, what is the most nonsensical of the responses? Eliminate that one first. Now, it may be that you have some questions, some of the, the level three and the level four responses could be very, very, very close. And so you may need to think a little bit more when you get to that stage of just two. But then once you eliminate the, the most nonsensical and then the level to response, then you are on your way to finding the answer, all right? So the next point now, you pay attention to the superlatives in the question. What do I mean by superlatives? Most likely, main, best, most suitable. Now it's important for me to zero in on this here. When you have questions that ask you for superlatives, it does not mean that there aren't other responses that could be used. In fact, in some cases, all of the four responses could possibly be used. All right, now here's where you really have to use the brain now because you will then need to determine, okay, what is it that is the best thing here, the best? answer so it does not mean that the others are incorrect it does not mean that the others are incorrect all it means is that there's one specific one that is the most likely that is the main that is the best that is the most 
it's tutable and stuff. All right. And now let me say something here again regarding most suitable answer. Sometimes you may disagree or you may be having a kind of doubt as to the correct answer as opposed to another response. Okay, and it may be that that response could also be the correct one. It could also be, all right? But you have to based on what is what is given to you based on the responses that's what you are being asked to answer just based on the responses that are given so if in your mind the question should be going a different way the responses should be going a different way and that tends to happen sometimes with caribbean studies because caribbean studies is a multidisciplinary subject it is not a one type of subject. So you have history, you have geography, you have economics, right? You have some science in there. You have all of these subjects coming together to make one subject. So the likelihood is that you, who may be, who may be a majoring, say, in science or in geography, you may be looking at it from a certain perspective. All right, and then you may say, but the answer is not here. I don't see the answer here based on what I know. Students, remember that you are expected to select the most suitable answer from all the responses that are given. Just select the most suitable, suitable answer. All right, now I have devised a little acronym here for us to remember how to master the multiple choice. Read, that is the acronym, read. So first, you read the question at least twice before attempting to answer and interpret the question correctly. Now, let me spend a little time here. Now, many students read the question once and say to themselves, oh, I know this answer, and you just go ahead and put down. But it may be that you have been following the past papers like we are about to do now, and so you have seen this question. And it's likely because the questions tend to be repeated over the years, all right? So you would have seen this question and you say, okay, I know this answer and I'm just gonna write down the answer without reading the question a second time. Now, let me tell you, you can get into trouble with this. Why? Because it's very likely that any number of things could happen. It could be that the question is now phrased a little differently. Right? So when you saw the question, the question could be, which of the following is? And then this question is saying, which of the following is not? Do you see where the trouble could come in? Is not. But you did not see the not. But because you're familiar with that question, you have seen it somewhere before in some form or the other, you just go ahead and select a response that you think is the correct response. So you see those not and best and mean and mainly and so on, those are usually bold and usually in caps lock. So you should not try to miss those. Look out for those when you are attempting to answer the question. When you are reading, let those jump out of you, out at you, sorry, and look at those. Understand if the question actually asks you for not because not can make a big difference all right so read the question and then here's another thing that could happen now apart from the question being phrased differently or just one word being inserted there the responses could be different it could be the very same question but the responses are different all right so you you in in, in the question it, the first time you saw the question it could be that this was the response but then you do not see that response there anymore right and if for example you you memorized that the answer would be c here's another problem it could be the same question it could be the same responses but then the responses could be placed differently could be placed differently. So when you saw the question, the correct answer was at A. But this time around, the correct answer is not at A, 
the correct answer is at C. Right? So how would you how would you react to that? And these are some simple mistakes that students that you make each time because you think you know it. Do not think you know it. Make sure that you know it. So you read the question at least twice. So you know what the question is saying. Now, to this part that says interpret the question correctly. Now, a big part of the problem is not interpreting the question correctly. So the question is asking something, but that's not what you see. That's not what you get. What you are understanding the question to say is different from what the question is asking. So you need to ensure that what you have in your mind or what you have developed in your mind after looking at the question is exactly what the question is asking. All right? So students, be very, very careful. Now on to E. Examine all the responses and then eliminate the distractors. Now some persons tend to just, okay, A. Let me just select A. All right. And when you when you have a question, when you have a, a question that is a superlative question and it, it's asking for the most suitable, it's asking for best, it's asking for main. When you have a question like that, it's important to read all the responses. Because as I said before, all the responses could be a possible answer. All right. Which of the following is a cause? They could very well put four causes there, right? Most times it is three. So they may put a nonsensical response at a level one there, and then the other three are all causes. If, if all of them are causes, you need to decide which one is the most suitable answer based on what is there. So you need to examine all the responses. Don't just glance at the question and say, oh, I know this, and let me mark this. Do not do that. If you do that, then you'll be putting yourself at risk of not getting the question correct, all right? So you need to pay close attention to examining all the responses. Do the process of elimination before you continue. A, attend to the key terms and superlatives that give clues for the answer. Now, we said this before, but we are just putting all of this into our, our, our trendy acronym READ. Attend to the key terms. Look at the key terms that are there. Look at the superlatives that are there. Look at the, for example, a question that asks about Creole, right? Which of the following is the meaning of Creole? Let's look at that question. And that's a very popular question. It has come on several papers. When you are asked that question, the key word is Creole, obviously. So you need to know what Creole means in order to be able to answer that question. All right? And other key terms could be during slavery or during plantation society. That's a concept, that's a period, right? That you need to pay attention to. So, and he, we go back to interpreting the question again, right? And just for argument's sake, suppose the question is asking you about that particular thing for a specific time period, and you are interpreting the question for now, for this current period, for current Caribbean society and culture, right? Remember, now we know we are also doing history in Caribbean studies. So if that is the case, how then? would you answer that question? You need to ensure that you understand clearly all of the context, all of the key terms, all of the superlatives before you actually respond. All right, D now, you determine the best answer. The best answer, the best answer based on the responses given. So in your mind, as a practitioner of this particular subject area, this may not be, in your mind, the best answer overall. But based on what is on, in front of you, <coughs> excuse me, on the page, what is the best one on the page? Not what is the best one overall, because you cannot write your own response in multiple choice. 
if you were writing a paper too, then you could argue your way through it, right? Like I love to do, I love paper twos because in paper two, you can argue your way through. And if the question is five marks, then you can say to yourself, I must get three marks on this. So I can write something and get three marks. I can write something and get even one mark. Not so with multiple choice. Each question is worth one mark and it's only one correct answer. So do not invent your own answers, right? You are not allowed to do so for multiple choice. Do not invent your own answers. Just use what is given to you on the page. And when you examine what is on the page in front of you, then you select the answer that you think is the best one out of that. All right? So that is our acronym for mastering the multiple choice. Now, here are some specific things you need to know about multiple choice questions for Caribbean studies. Caribbean studies multiple choice questions are sometimes multi-layered. <clears throat> so what do I mean by that? And here it is, I am using the example I used before in terms of the term Creole. This is an example of a multi-layered question. So in a multi-layered question, you would have seen these before, and I know that you probably do not like these questions because these questions cause you to spend a little more time, all right? So it gives you three responses, a language, a white person born in the Caribbean, enslaved persons born in the Caribbean. And then it gives you A, one only, B, one and two only, C, one and three only, and D, one, one two and three. All right? So these multi-layered questions, and then if you have four responses, and then the A, B, C, D, it can make it even more complicated. So you have to be careful when you're doing these kinds of questions. You have to be careful that you're selecting the right thing because you could also make a mistake and select the wrong thing based on how they're set out here. So you have to look at it very carefully. Perhaps you will need to use your, your rough page that you will receive or maybe the booklet itself and um, go through and write down. Okay, so when you're answering these kinds of questions, here's what you need to do, these multi-layered questions. You need to first say, you can use the same process that we've been talking about with elimination, but here's what I would do for questions like these. I would first say, which one must be in it? Which one must? So you take that one out first. Which one must be in it? All right, and you can use this strategy. This strategy is a little bit different from just the regular other questions that are not multi-layered. So you say, okay, mm, let me look at it now. One must be in it. So in your mind, what must be in it? One must be in it. So you take out one. And then you begin to look at the responses that are there, the A, B, C, D part, and you begin to see if one must be in it, which are the responses there that have one? Now, from what we have here, one is in all of them. So you have to go back to the drawing board, right? This question can make it a little bit more complicated. Look back now at the responses that are given. All right, so you have two more. All right, so you could say then, all right, so I recall that Creole is another word for mulatto. So three must be in it. So you add three to the list. So you have one now and three. So you're now going to be selecting, be looking out for which of the A, B, C, D responses give you one and three. So you may narrow it down now somewhat. So based on what we have here, we have C as in one and three and D as in one and three. So you are now saying to yourself, this it must be between C and D. It must be between C and D somehow. That's what it is saying. So you're not going to look back at it again. Is it one and three only? Look now at two, a white person born in the Caribbean. Do you recall at any point in time this terminology being used to refer to this grouping of persons, a white person born in the Caribbean, 
right? So that's what you now need to determine, you know. Uh, well, there are no, well, I already said as a disclaimer, I already dispelled the myth that there is any random standard formula that you use. But my experience really has been that a lot of the times, D, D which usually has all of them in there. So if it's four, it would say one, two, three, four. D usually, a lot of the times, that's the response. So a lot of the times, I'm not going to say to you it is all the time or it is most of the time, but a lot of the time D is the answer. But remember again, you have to look at what is in front of you. You can't look at what you think may be or what normally obtains because you are looking at every single question in front of you. Now I see a few of you raising hands there. I will give you time at the end of this multiple choice section. As soon as I'm finished with this PowerPoint, I will allow a few questions there all right so from what we have here d is the answer it is true that a white person born in the caribbean was called creole and this was partly because white people who lived in england or whichever of the mother countries these individuals would look down on white persons who are born in the west indies as less than because they were not born in England, you know? They were not born in Britain and they were not born in France. This term, however, would more refer to um, the British Caribbean. And so these persons were called Creole, and this was meant to lower their status just a little bit, to differentiate between these individuals born in the Caribbean and the individuals who are completely British who are born in Britain right i don't have the right accent so yes this is this is this term refers to all three of these categories so d is indeed the answer all right so i do hope that we're listening now how so let me just review that quickly in terms of the multi-layered questions you are to select which ones must be in it first select which ones must be in it first when you have selected which ones must be it first, you then begin to eliminate now. And then you may come down to C and D or two of them. You may come down to two of them. In this case, it came down to C and D. And then you now review whatever else is there to determine whether or not those could be in it. Usually D has all of them and C may have three of them or two of them. Again, two of the responses. All right. So that's the multi-layered question, all right? Another point that you need to note for Caribbean studies multiple choice questions is that there may be more than one very plausible responses to the questions. I think I mentioned this somewhere before, but we're speaking specifically about Caribbean studies. There may be more than one very plausible responses, but only one of them is correct only one of them is the best answer only one of them is the most suitable answer so do not be distracted by all of that right remember now we know everything else that's not the correct answer is a distractor so that's the aim of the distractors to distract you from the correct response so do not focus on those things now depend on what you know depend on what you have done. And here is where your knowledge of what is happening, your knowledge of the content will come in handy. So students, I will now advise you, if you have not begun to do your reading, begin to do so now, because the content is what will help you, all right? So here we are at the brain again. The brain is required. You need to think it's not a no-brainer. Multiple choice is not a no-brainer. Now, let me give you, let me let you in on a little secret. Now, I am a writer. I love to write. If you give me 10 essays to write, I will write. And I will wow you with my writing, right? And when I am done with you and the writing, I must get an A. However, multiple choice was always my weaker point. It was always my weaker point, all right? Because with multiple choice, it is so very specific. 
specific. So very specific, right? So you need to be sure of your content. You need to do your reading, have the reading done. It's not enough. Yes, this marathon is about going through the past papers, looking, what the, looking at what the questions look like, knowing the answers. That will not be enough. So even though I am the facilitator of this um, initiative today, I am saying to you that you cannot depend on what we do here only. Chances are some of these questions will be repeated. There's a good chance. However, you still cannot depend on that alone. You must know your content, all right? And so that is it for our multi mastering the multiple choice PowerPoint this morning. We will move on to the other segment after we do a few things. We talk about key terms, and this is the key term that we are looking at here. Historically, it did not say geographical. So because it did not say geographical, we have to eliminate archipelago and Caribbean basin because those are geographical features and not historical features. Now, we need to then determine from B and C, see we're doing the process of elimination. We need to determine from B and C, which of these is a historical feature. Now, once you see anything to do with slave, then you would want to look at that, all right? And so, of course, B is the correct answer, enslavement. Now for this paper 2019, I am going through a little bit slower, but we are probably will go through a little bit faster with the others and perhaps just give the answer as we go along. The reason for us going a little bit slower here is for us to apply those techniques that we just learned in the, in the multiple choice PowerPoint, all right? It's not enough to just know A is the answer, B is the answer, C is the answer. You must know why this is the res correct response. You have to learn to justify your answer. Now, there's nobody sitting in front of you. You don't need to justify it to somebody, but you need to be justified of the answer in your mind. If you are not justified of that answer in your mind, then chances are that's not the correct answer. So you have to learn to justify for your own self why this is the correct answer. And that is why we are doing this. We are not simply just sorting the answers and writing them down and putting them back, right? We are learning how to eliminate. We are learning how to apply the technique of read that we just learned. So we move on to question four. A society may best be described as A, set of customs and traditions, B, place set aside to practice norms and values, C, a group of people from the same race living in a country, or D, people with shared traditions living in the same geographical area. All right, set of customs and traditions, is that a society or is that more a definition of culture? All right, so that's, we could look at that as the level one response. I'm trying to allow you to see how we, we apply the things that we just learned. Level one response, because it's not a definition at all of society. It's completely out. Look at B now. A place set aside to practice norms and values. It comes a little closer in terms of place. You know, it says that this, if you select this response, it says that you know something about a society, but not enough. C, group of people from the same race living in a country, all right? So this comes closer to the answer. It talks about a group of people. It talks about a, a, a geographical space, Does it, even though it doesn't say geographical space. But then look at from the same race. So there's always something slight that eliminates the level three response. Something very slight, same race. They are not necessarily the same race. So that would make the question, that would make this response the incorrect one. And then of course, D is the correct answer because it talks about people with shared traditions living in the same geographical area. That's the most likely response for that question. Number five, soil deterioration in the Caribbean can be caused by, all right, so we are, we are now looking at some geographic, ge geographical type questions. 
soil deterioration in the Caribbean can be caused by A, terracing, B, reforestation, C, monocropping, B, planting over crops. All right? So look at, the, look at these responses now. Eliminate the one that could not be there based on what the question is asking. The question asks about deterioration. Deterioration. So first of all, you would say reforestation has to be out because reforestation is, 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 is kind of the, 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 a response to something like that. You're trying to fix that situation. But it's not asking about results or, or impact or responses. It's talking about causes. That's what it's asking you. So reforestation would not be a cause, all right? Uh, terracing would not be a cause either because terracing is meant to hold the soil together, all right? And planting over crops, not necessarily a response to that. So the answer then is C, monocropping. And if we recall, monocropping is where you plant only one crop over a period of time and that crop leaks all of the all of the nutrients from the soil and causes the soil to deteriorate so that is the correct answer number six the term creole is used to refer to we already answered this question and obviously it is a popular question all right but let's look if the responses are the same or if they are in the same order so yes the question is familiar but are the responses in the same order? Is the, are the responses the same? From what we're looking at, the responses are the same. So we can simply go ahead and not spend too long on this question and answer the question as B. Number seven, Garveyism, which occurred in the 20th century, is an example of cultural, is an example of cultural, A, erasure, B, renewal, C, norming, D, diversity. All right, now this is a kind of a controversial question, even amongst us teachers of the subject. All right, Garvey sought to bring back a kind of or instill a kind of Africanness, a kind of self pride, self love, and, and, and so on, black love, and to, to, to bring togetherness amongst the black race. So it would not be erasure. He would not be erasing culture there. No, that would have to be out. Uh, diversity speaks to a whole different kind of issue, speaks to different kinds of cultures in one space. Um, norming, not necessarily, he was not asking people to conform, right? He was asking people, the black race, to stand out, not to conform. So not necessarily norming. And so the, risk, the answer then is B, renewal. Now, here's, an, here's another example of a question that we would say, this is not, there's no answer here. There's no likely answer here. However, you're not asked to give a different answer. We are asked to give the most, you know, the, the most likely answer, the best answer out of all of the responses. And the best answer out of all of the responses is of course, renewal. Now, there are individuals, practitioners of history and Garveyism who may disagree that renewal is not necessarily the best thing. However, based on what is here, this is the response. Number eight, which of the following was the most important determining factor of one's position in colonial plantation society? A, race, and notice the superlative, most, race, B, class, E, wealth, and the place of birth. Now, right away, using our process of elimination, we can eliminate place of birth. Does not matter place of birth. All right? Well, I could say to an extent, and I might take that back and qualify it to say, because we did say that white individuals born in the West Indies were considered to be a little less than white individuals born in Britain. So, possibly. But that was not the most important determining factor. That was minute when you compare it to the other things. So place of birth will, will be out. And here is again another question that gives you um, 
several responses that could be the answer because wealth was a determining factor. So was class. So was class. But were they the most important determining factor? No. Race, which is A, is the most important determining factor. Number nine, which of the following syncretic religions had its early beginnings in Jamaica? All right, A, Shango, B, Voodoo, C, Revivalism, and D, Rastafarianism. All right. Now, here's, this may be another con uh, controversial question. All right. It says, which are the following syncretic religions? So, for the most part, for the most part, these are syncretic religions. Uh, one may argue that voodoo, not so much, because voodoo has a lot of the original elements from African society, from West Africa. It has a lot of those original elements. So it may not really be syncretic. And when you talk about syncretic, you're talking about a mixing of religions. Certainly Shango, which is mixed with elements of Christianity and revivalism. All right, so we're talking about, so the word, the key word then is not necessarily the syncretic as much as the early beginnings in Jamaica, because most of them can be argued as syncretic. All right. But it says it's early beginnings in Jamaica. And obviously that answer is D, Rastafari. All right. So now it's up to you to determine when you see the question, which of the concepts there is, 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 the, is a key term for you to arrive at the specific answer. So you may have more than one key terms there, things that you could use to determine the answer. But then when you look at what the responses are, you may lean to one over the other. Question 10. Which of the following aspects of Caribbean culture is least threatened by cultural erasure? A, way of dress, B, driving habits, C, oral tradition, and D, food preparation. All right? So, least, least, that is the superlative there, least threatened by cultural erasure, least. Way of, way of dress, uh not so much not so much because we do have a lot of influences from north america uh oral tradition um because of influences too food preparation yes we do have we do have influences of food preparation from other jurisdictions driving habit not so much you know least that's what the question says so b b is the correct answer all right and I am actually looking through these questions with you and going through and arriving at the answers with you. So if you, if you are looking at it, see if you can arrive at the answer on your own as we go along, right? So it gives you some kind of practice for the exam. Which of the following family types was introduced to the Caribbean by the East Indians? A, nuclear, B, neolocal, C, extended, and D, matrifocal. And it says family type. All right. So neolocal is not necessarily related to a type, you know, family type. So we could el eliminate that right uh, way. All right. And it says by the East Indians. And here's another controversial question because others would argue that the you know, there are other groupings. The Africans also had uh, an extended family type. That was what they were used to as well. But the response, the correct answer here is extended for the East Indians. Note, you're looking at family types and you're looking at the group, which is East Indians. That's how you arrive at the answer. In which of the following ways has religion positively influenced Caribbean societies? A, encouraging classism. B, establishing values and identity. C, promoting the colonial agenda. And D, promoting the equality of the sexes. Promoting equality of the sexes. Which are the following ways as religion? Religion positively influenced Caribbean societies. All right. So that's number 12. And we, the answer for that is B, establishing values and identity. It definitely has done so. All right. Uh, 
that is the uh, at response here. Now, other persons can say that promoting the colonial agenda could also be a response, but it says positively. So that's what you're looking for, positively. It's not that it does not encourage classism. It's not that it does not promote the colonial agenda. And of course, D would be the level one response. It does not at all promote equality of the sexes necessarily. But you are asked to give the positive influence. 13, and we will move a little faster than we have been going. All right, in order to see how many of these papers we can go through. 13, which of the following measures did Caribbean people use to challenge European dominate, domination during the 15th century? A, burning plantations, B, subsistence farming, C, micro-level resistance, and D, economic independence. And it's note the time period here, the time period. So it's not to say that not, none of the other responses could be, is not a kind of resistance measure, right? Um, all of these, all of these are resistance measures on some level or the other. However, it asked about the 15th century, which was actually very early in the plantation period. And according to Beckers and Shepherd, historians, the, the earlier period was not necessarily marked by insurrectionary resistance, but non-insurrectionary resistance, uh, such as micro-level resistance, all right? So then the answer for 13 is C. 14, which are the following sports did the white planter class use in an effort to demonstrate moral and racial superiority over their black subjects? Sports, which are the following sports? The answer is A. All right, rugby is a new phenomenon. So it's football and baseball to the Caribbean. Cricket is what was used. 15, the Rastafarian movement gained worldwide recognition mainly through A, tourism, B, reggae music, C, the use of marijuana, or D, the Nyabingi movement. And of course, the resounding answer to that is reggae music. All right, let's go now to 17. Still have ways to go here. Sorry, we'll go to 16. ICT is a driving force behind changes in industry. What does ICT mean in this statement? And of course, the answer is D, information and communications technologies. 17. Which are the following types of development seeks to protect future generations? Right away, we know that when we talk about sustainability, we're talking about future generations. So the answer there is D. The responses were global, humane, economic, sustainable. 18. Which of the following is considered an element of good governance? A. Cronyism. B. Popularity. C. Rule of law. And D. Exclusiveness. All right, so some of those things you can then just eliminate right, of, right away. And once you see rule of law, then you should know that that is the answer. So C, 19, which of the following actions can be considered gender inequality? Here's a multi-layer question or for, first multi-layer question. And we have to look at this one very carefully. Which of the following actions? Here are the responses. Fathers being denied paternity leave, and we're looking at gender inequality, you know. Inequality, fathers being denied paternity leave. Uh, women fighting discrimination in the law courts. Three, only males being guaranteed secondary education. All right, so which one of these must be in it? All right, from first glance, I would say that one must be in it. And then we determine whether two and three should be in it or not. All right, uh, look at it again. Gender, it can be considered gender inequality. Only males being guaranteed secondary education is gender inequality that must be there. So we have already arrived at one and three must be there. 
do we include two or not? Do we include it? Women fighting discrimination in the law courts. Now, the very fact that in a society, women are, are allowed to be fighting discrimination in the law courts says that there is some amount of equality in the society that is being fought for, that is being arrived at. All right? And so the response here is B, one and three only. All right. Number 20 now, which institution in the integration movement preceded the Caribbean community and common markets? Remember that CARICOM was not the first thing, right? We had something else before, before Caribbean, Caribbean community, CARICOM. And that answer is Caribbean Free Trade Association. That's uh, B. B. All right, so we began to talk about trade before we went on to becoming a community. 21, what does the following expression represent? GDP over population. That's what, it, that's what is shown here. Response is A, GNP, B, per capita, C, pop population growth rate, and D, economic growth rate. And the answer is per capita all right so once you have the population at the bottom it has something to do with per capita right so um you also see it named as gdp per capita 22 which of the following indicators of development is generated from information that is derived from an inequality survey inequality survey indicators of development all right now all of the things that are given here are an indicator one way or the other a the gini index b the age dependency ratio c the international credit rating uh, yes it can be used to indicate or give a final understanding of where we stand in terms of development and of course hdi is an indicator of development so all of those are but we're talking about inequality and the instrument that we use for inequality to measure inequality or equality is A, the Gini index, or Gini index. 23, in which of the following years was the World Trade Organization formed? All right, that's 23. A, 1795, B, 1885, C, 1945, and D, 1995. That's the WTO the World Trade Organization, all right? The answer there is D. All right, we go now to 24. Which of the following is a function of the mass media? A, promoting private sector interest. B, acting as an agent of the government. C, informing citizens of local and international affairs and the acting as a propaganda tool for local and foreign governments all right now that's not to say that the responses at a b and d do not occur that's not to say that right however these are not the core functions of the mass media and so these though this happens the core function of the mass media here is to inform citizens of local and international affairs that is 25 which are the following outcomes results from globalization a increased import costs b strict immigration policies c closed economic space d commercialization of cultures that's 25 outcomes results from globalization results from globalization and the answer there is d a commercialization of cultures all right now these questions can be a little bit more tricky and a little wordy in terms of the responses that are given so you will have to read them over in order to 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 see what's happening there you may not get them at first glance 26 one challenge faced by Caribbean countries in achieving integration is A, insularity, B, 
high levels of illiteracy. C, the impact of natural disasters. D, large number of indigenous peoples. Challenge, challenge faced by Caribbean countries. You can already eliminate large numbers of indigenous peoples. That's not a challenge in achieving integration, is it? No, not necessarily. All right, the answer is A, insularity. That has been our major challenge in the Caribbean in trying to achieve integration. Each country is different and, and very attached individually, you know, and, and has a strong sense of nationality and nationalism and not necessarily a sense of regionalism, so to speak. And so we continue not to have the kind of regionalism that we want because of insularity. 27, the members of the OECS share more achievements among themselves than with their CARICOM partners. That is a statement of fact. That is a statement of fact. Which of the following is not a common achievement of the OECS? All right, so you have a currency, B, high court, C, government, D, central bank. Which of the following is not an achievement? All right, the answer is government. So they do have one currency. They do have a high court and they do have a central bank together. They do not share one government. All right, we move on now to 28. Early 19th century writings from an indigenous perspective served to A, give credit to the Europeans for shaping our history. B, convince Caribbean people that the Kalinagas were peace-loving. Hmm. Describe C, describe people living in the Caribbean prior to the arrival of Columbus, and D, reject the notion held by Europeans that early inhab inhabitants did not have a history. Right away, we eliminate B and A, don't we? Right away, we can eliminate B and A, that is 28, because we, we the, the aim of indigenous perspectives is not to give credit to Europeans at all. And certainly it's not to convince anybody that the Kalinagas were peace loving. I think there is enough evidence to show that they were not peace loving at all. All right, so it's between C and D. All right, and the answer is D because it's most likely answer, right? Reject the notion. And if you look at the responses, you'd see that this response is, is, it makes more sense. This is kind of a common sense one even if you didn't know that this one makes the most sense reject the notion held by europeans that early inhabitants did not have a history all right 29 in its manifesto a political party promised to maximize citizens welfare and ensure equal access to resources which of the following best describes what the party is promoting a social justice b sustainable development c educational opportunities and b environmental conservation Environmental conservation is not mentioned there at all. You eliminate that first go. Uh, you could then, it says equal access to resources, not necessarily educational opportunities. So we're looking at A and B. And the answer is social justice. Once you're talking about equal access to resources, regardless of race, color, class, religion, uh, creed, sexual orientation, and all of those different categories, uh, sex, then you are talking about social justice. That's what social justice is about. Which of the following individuals is associated with the negritude movement? Okay, somebody had a concern before about the negritude movement. All right, now the answer to this is B, Leopold Senghor. 31. All right, now. Normally when we hit 31, and a lot of the multiple choice papers, if you go through and look at them um, coming up and we'll see the same thing when we go through. So when we go through some of the other papers when we move on to 2018 and so on, we perhaps will not so much go on to 31. We'll probably stop at 30 or so. Because at 31, most of the questions are usually going on to 45, they are usually related to um, research. That's what most of the questions are usually related to. 
research. Not that it's not important, it's module three of the syllabus and so it's very, very important. But you'll find there's a lot of repetition of these questions, all right? So we are going to just give the responses to these and then we're going to open up another past paper, all right? Because the time is going. So 31, I'll just give the responses. The questions are shown on your screen. So you should be able to view those questions. 31 is A, reliability in research refers to the extent to which a researcher is able to A, get similar results after repeating trials. All right, so we're just gonna go through these very, very quickly. 32, in research, an accessible population is one that consists of, the, the answer there is D, members of the target population who can be reached by the investigator. All right, 33, which of the following describes the purpose of a literature review? Purpose of a literature review. The answer there is D. It sets the study in the context of previous research. That's what you are doing with a literature review, right? So you are not uh, just thinking of something from scratch on your own. You are looking, you're making your research much more credible by looking at other research, previous research. 34, a researcher wishes to conduct an investigation on the effects of physical abuse on children at a primary school. Which of the following does he need before interacting with the children? Primary school, it says. So all of these things, you have to look at all of these variables now in the question. The answer is B, informed consent from a parent or guardian. If you're looking at a primary school, that means that the students are underage. You cannot just go and get information from students at that level or at that age. 35, in research, the process of identifying a problem to be investigated involves, 35, the answer is B, formulating a feasible topic. Remember, you know, you're, you are identifying. You're not at in doing anything else yet. You're just identifying a problem. You have to come up with a topic first. So a topic must be there and then the problem comes out of that. All right. 36, which of the following terms is used to describe a statement that is tested by collecting and analyzing objective evidence? Okay, 36, the, the answer to that is C, hypothesis. You make a statement, and then you test it, collect data, analyze, and then you, um, you may arrive at a thesis out of that. You may dispute the hypothesis, or you may agree and, and, and that hypothesis now becomes the thesis. So the answer is C. 37. In which of the following groups of sampling does purposive sampling fall? And the answer to that is D, non-probability sampling. All right. You'll have to do a little bit more reading now on this aspect. A researcher gathered a group of persons in one location. He wanted to get their responses on a specific issue. Which of the following methods of data collection did the researcher use? 38, the answer is C, focus group discussion. He gathered a group of persons in one location. That's a focus group discussion. 39. A researcher wants to conduct a qualitative study on traditional dances. Which of the following data sources will be useful? Here is a multi-layered question. The, you have video footage, oral, oral historians, and the Bureau of Statistics. The answer is A, which is one and two video footage, and oral historian. Qualitative study now on traditional dances. You, you, you don't go to Bureau of Statistics to, to collect information on traditional dances. Which of the following is the first step in selecting a sample for research? That's number 40. And the answer is A, defining the population. First step, first step. Before you do anything else, you have to define the population. Who are the people? Who are these people? You know, define them. And then after that, you select your sample. 
all right and when you select your sample you become a little bit more specific in terms of age and number and all of these things and certain skill sets perhaps all right that's 40 a 41 which of the following methods is best used for gathering data in quantitative research gather and it's best that's a superlative there the answer is b quantitative meaning you need a lot you need numbers a questionnaire is the best thing right 42 there's a whole statement here i'll just give the answer for 42 because you are able to see what the question is saying the answer for 42 is b unsuitable methodology the question asks which of the following issues is likely to affect tiara's research based on all of that scenario and the answer is b unsuitable methodology 43, answer for 43 is A, which of the following format is most suitable to pres for presenting the findings from an investigation that uses focus group discussions as a data collection method, meaning that you're having all of these people sitting down and they're answering all of these questions. The best way to represent that is to use text. You write out what they have said. It's going to be difficult then to. Some of the other things could be used, but it, they may be secondary to using text. 44. Correlation in research refers to A. Hypothesis of study. B. Relationship between participants in a study. C. Degree of relationship between variables. And D. Dependent and independent variables of the study. The answer is C. Degree of relationship between the variables. That's what we're talking about. We talk about correlation. And 45 for 24, 2019 paper. Ravi thinks that the results from his research could be affected by the size of the sample. In what section of his research paper should he explain this? And of course, that would be the limitation. All right. So we are now finished with the 2019 paper. All right. And we'll find that some of these questions are repeated as we go now into looking at the 2018 paper. So we'll go right into that. All right, are there any questions while we try to go into the 2018 paper? Hi, yes. Um, earlier, someone had asked if there is any PDFs as a study guide. Yes, PDF? yes, I did say that there is a, a PDF study guide. There um, is. Okay. There was a query about question nine. Um, some, I think it's Alicia or Ali had said, I think she was confused as to how you had um, the answer as D as a response because she was pretty sure that the answer would have been C. So I think she wanted that explanation how you got to that response. Question, question. nine, okay. Yeah. I had actually moved on from that one. Uh, question nine. Okay, the answer I had was D. Can I make a note of it and come back to that? Perhaps. Well, somebody asked about it in the chat. So they also have the same query or question about question. Okay, all right. We'll come, we can come back to that at the very end. Okay. We are doing um, that section there. All right. So we have moved on to the 2018 paper. Let us look at the 2018 paper now. Okay, so here is the 2018 paper. And if we're looking at the 2018 paper, then we would see that the very first question is the same very first question on the 2019 paper asking about a uh, diaspora, it's the very same question. So we can already answer that question from there okay all right so when we look at the other responses 
that are given there, those responses do not necessarily give the best answer for the question. Uh, so the answer there, even though the question is the same though, even though the question is the same, note that for the 2019 paper, the answer, the response, the correct answer is at C. Correct answer is at C. All right. So remember I was saying to you when we were looking at the strategies that you cannot just go ahead and memorize a paper and just say, okay, it is C, it is A. You just don't memorize the question because here it is that the responses are pretty much the same with, 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 with a few tweaks. If you compare this paper with the 2019 paper, the, the responses are pretty much the same, but the appearance of the responses are different. And so if you had studied 2019 and determined that C was the answer, and as you open this, you see the same question and you just mark C, you would be in problem. And this is exactly what I was explaining before. You need to know the answer. You actually need to know the answer to the question. All right? So no matter how it appears or where it appears, you are able to respond. So in this case, the answer is B. Communities developed away from their original homeland. All right, so we're going to move very quickly through this one. Our schedule time to end is at 12. And we do, we did want to have that section at the end where you can then answer those questions. We'll see if that is feasible or not. Number two, which are the following outcomes did not result from adult suffrage? We have not seen this question before in the Caribbean. A, decolonization, B, democratic reform, C, government approval, and D, political enfranchisement. Which of the following outcomes did not result? And adult suffrage refers to the right to vote. All right? So what, which is the answer there? The answer there is C, government approval. All right? And it says did not result. Three, to what extent, to what section of the slave trade does the middle passage refer? What section of the slave trade does the middle passage refer? All right. And of course, the answer already to that, the journey from West Africa to the New World. That's the second leg of the journey. Number four, under slavery, Caribbean society was described Sorry, Caribbean society was characterized by A, social mobility, B, rigid separation of classes, C, equality among all people, D, rise of middle class, class groups. Right away, we know that there was no social mobility and uh, the other things also do not match. And so the answer there is B, rigid separation of classes. Very rigid. It was a type of caste system. Five. The enslavement of Africans in the Caribbean contributed to the, in, to the erasure of their cultural practices because they A, voluntarily converted to Christianity, B, were encouraged to retain some of their customs, that's not true, C, were separated from their family and kinship groups, and D, were made to live with persons of the same tribe on the plantation. The answer is D. All right, none of those other things took place. None of those other things took place. Six, the main aim of col colonial education in the Caribbean was to A, control the masses at the time, B, prepare the masses for managerial positions, C, encourage the masses to become independent, and D, provide the masses with skills needed to function in society. We're at number six, and the answer is A control the masses. So how, how is that so, you may ask? By teaching us British history and, 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 and all kinds of things related to Britain and not necessarily about ourselves, our own history and about what we can do. So it was about continuing that kind of con control that was present um, under colonialism. Seven. 
Which of the following festivals is celebrated in Toronto? That is number seven. You have A, Caribana. You have B, Reggae Some Fest, C, Labor Day Parade, and B, Notting Hill Carnival. All right? And the answer to that is Caribana. Eight. Which of the following indigenous groups settled in Central America in pre-Columbian times? The answer is the Maya. It says Central America, not the Caribbean island. It says Central America, the Maya. Nine, which of the following terms best describes the near extermination of the indigenous population caused by European exploration and settlement in the Caribbean? And that answer, of course, is, is genocide. That's C. 10, there's a pie chart that is shown here shows population distribution in, Caribbean, in a Caribbean country by nationality. The question says, which of the following Caribbean countries is most likely being depicted by the pie chart? So the largest part of the pie, 43.65% is Indian, right? Uh, which Caribbean country off the bat would, would, would fit into that? There are two Caribbean countries that you could say, and one of them is definitely missing, so of course it must be the other one. All right, those two Caribbean countries that you consider for something like that is Guyana and Trinidad, based on the large number of Indians that settled there uh, during indentureship. So, of course, they, the answer here is Guyana, B. 11, which of the following approaches was used by Caribbean people to challenge European domination during the 16th century? I've seen this question before. The responses seem to be in the same way uh, structured in the same way and so we go along with c as well we recall that question from 2019 paper 12 which of the following beliefs best shows the link between a cultural norm and a cultural value all right so the answer for 12 is b the link between a cultural norm and a cultural value. Cooking extra food for unexpected guests signifies hospitality, right? So the value is hospitality. Yes, we definitely have that value with the Caribbean. We're known for hospitality. And cooking extra food for unexpected guests, definitely a practice that we do. So the answer there is B. 13. Mr. Polygon has been advised by the agricultural agency that he needs to minimize soil erosion on his hillside farm, which are the following conservation methods is best for him to use. Hillside farming, hillside farming. The answer is terracing, because that would help to retain the soil. 14, which are the following practices did indigenous peoples contribute to Caribbean culinary traditions? Indigenous peoples the Taino, the Kalinago, and the Maya. All right? And the answer for 14 is B. And B has one and two only. Use of cassareep, which is a kind of dish from cassava, and the dish is made from maize, corn, which was the mainstay of the Maya. Codfish is not from the Caribbean. Cod codfish is imported. And they definitely didn't have codfish. The indigenous peoples didn't have that. 15, Julia migrated to the United States where she works and sends money to her mother who takes care of her children. This money is known as, the answer here is C, remittance. All right. 16, which of the following types of development seeks to protect Resources for future generations. We have looked at that already. A similar question, not exactly the same, but very similar. And the answer is D. 17, gender inequality is a factor that hinders development. Which of the following actions result in gender inequality? Now, we saw questions similar to this in 2019, on 2019's paper, but it's not exactly the same, right? This says which of the following actions result, result. And I think the other question was asking about each of the actions 
indicate gender, gender inequality? I think that was what the first one was asking. So remember I said to you that do not just memorize the questions and the answers and think that you know, you know what you are to know because the question may be phrased differently. Here it is, this is asking about results. The answer is B, one and three only, just the same. Fathers are denied paternity leave, males are guaranteed secondary education. That is B, one and three. We move along swiftly. 18, which of the following organizations aims to regulate trade among countries? Regulate trade. We're talking about trade. We're talking about trade and we must be talking about the World Trade Organization at C. 19, the term indigenous perspectives was coined by West Indian scholars in the early 19th century too. Indigenous perspectives, we saw a question similar to this on the 2019 paper and the answer is D, same thing. Uh, reject the notion held by Europeans that indigenes were docile and backward. I uh, think the response there was D2, but if you notice the responses here are different, are phrased a little differently, right? So there was, there was no use of the word dis discredit, I recall, from that question. But the answer is reject the notion held by Europeans that indigenes were docile and backward. So even though the, the responses are phrased a little differently, you still can get the gist of the question coming out of it. 20. The mass media in the Caribbean is seen as promoting cultural imperialism because of the answer here is, we'll just do this one very quickly, is B, one and two only. It's focused on American talk shows and three, one and two, sorry. B is one and two. Two says it's relaying of the 24 hour, 24 hour European and American news cycle. All right, obviously, that's the answer. 21. In its manifesto, a political party promised to pursue a harmonious relationship among all classes of society and the guarantee of equal opportunities for all citizens. The, which of the following tenets is the party promoting? And that is similar to a question we saw before, social justice. Which of the following practices is considered an element of good governance? We saw this before. The answer is C, rule of law. One challenge faced by Caribbean countries in achieving integration is the, uh, we saw this before in the 2019 paper as well. The answer is D. In this case, this was not one of the responses, difference in levels of development. In fact, the question was phrased a little differently. 24, Sir Arthur Lewis, his theory, industrialization by invitation was based on A, direct foreign investment. 25, the, dependent, the, the dependency ratio is determined by calculating the uh, 25, the answer is D, proportion of the working population to those persons under and over the employment age. That's the answer, dependency ratio. All right, so it's your, under the, with the dependency ratio, you're looking at um, the ratio of individuals who are able to work and are working as against those who are unable to work or not at employable age for some reason or the other. 26, which of the following factors considered a challenge to development in the Caribbean? 26, the answer is D, lack of confidence in local products. Lack of confidence in local products. All right, that's the response for 26. 27, a major multinational oil corporation plans to set up drilling operations in the coastal waters of a country. The senior management will be mainly foreigners. Which of the following issues should be of concern to the country's government? And the answer for 27 is A impact of drilling on the fisheries sector all right 26 sorry 28 28 is where we're at which are the following outcomes results from globalization 
And there is, the answer there is B. We have seen this question already, commercialization of cultures, and most of the responses seem to be the same. 29, which of the following activities is an example of the mass media acting as an agent of socialization? We have seen a question like this, but the responses are not the same. So here it is that we need to read through and understand the question and know the answer. We must be able to select the answer because just memorizing will not help us. The answer to 29 is A. Showing a documentary on healthy eating habits. So in the first question on, in, the, in the 2019 paper, the question was not asking for examples. That question was asking about the core function of the mass media. This one is asking about an example of the mass media as an agent of socialization. 30, social justice is mainly considered with 30, the answer is C. Equity among members of society. Once we talk about social justice, that's what we're talking about. All right, so now we're at 31, and 31 again are questions about from coming from module three, which looks at research. So 31, and we're gonna just run through these quickly. Which of the following objectives would not be a purpose for conducting research? Answer is D, to gather data to support the researcher's agenda. You don't support your agenda. 32, the research process is systematic because D, is, it is structured so that it can be replicated. Yes. 33, which of the following activities is involved in, the, in identifying the research problem? The answer to 33 is also D, reviewing the literature. 34. Thirty-four. It is true to say that research objective is the same as the B summary of what the research is expected to achieve. Same thing. What the what the research is expected to achieve. Thirty-five. Participatory observation is viewed as a subjective method of data collection because answer is again D of the researchers close association with the respondents. All right, 36, which of the following procedures is not a probability method, not a probability method of sampling. Right away we can see that it's C, purposive sampling is totally different. 37, Dr. Goodwin, told our students that while conducting their research, they should think about how the data will be collected and the impact of the data collection is likely to have on the respondents. So what research concept was Dr. Goodwin referring? The answer for 37 is A, ethics in research, ethics. 38, which of the following outcomes is not an advantage of using a questionnaire as a data collector collection instrument? And it says not an advantage. And of course, the, the answer there, based on the responses, is D. Uh, 38, the answer, let me look at that again. Which of the following outcomes is not an advantage of using a questionnaire? It targets a large population because it is easy to distribute. Yes, that is an advantage. Data are easily analyzed as responses are usually short answers that is usually so it ensures confidentiality as respondents are not required to give names that is so all right all right d is the answer d it is flexible as additional information can be obtained from respondents not necessarily not necessarily with a with a questionnaire okay 39 why is it important to clarify a research problem in the initial stage of research process. 39, the answer is B, to provide the basis for conducting an empirical investigation. 40, which of the following statements satisfies the criteria for a, for a hypothesis? And the answer for 40 is D, 
the rise in crime in Craignish or Craignish Road has resulted from high unemployment. Hypothesis. All right, 41. In collecting data for her research project, Michelle organizes a discussion for selected students from her school to get their opinions. What data collecting method is she using? The answer for 41 is A. She's organizing a discussion, all right? So that is obviously focus group. 42, researchers interested in the consistency of their research results are, are concerned with 42D, reliability. Consistency gives reliability. 43, which of the following factors is of least importance when refining a research problem? A, relevance, B, feasibility, C, sample size, and D, availability of information. C, sample size, least important when refining a research problem. You're not at that stage yet to, to look at sample size. You are trying to ensure you have what you need at the beginning. 44, the answer is D. John was asked to research reasons persons choose the police force as a career. He chose to use a stratified sampling method. What is the main advantage of using this method for this research? And the answer is D. Members of the population do not have an independent chance of selection. And 45, Ravi thinks that the results from his research could be affected by the size of the sample. In what section of his research report should he explain this? 45, the answer is A, is limitation. All right, so we saw a question like that before, but it was not quite the same thing. All right, so we, I'm going to try to squeeze in one more paper, the 2017 paper, and then we will take the questions at the end and do the last poll at the end. All right, so forgive me while I go up to the 2017 paper. We'll find some repetition there again. So we'll just go through as quickly as we possibly can. Hi, Melissa, here. Um, just wanted to say before you, when you start the, the next paper, um, the participants are asking if you can just take a little time with it. They were having trouble keeping up with your last paper. Okay. We're going through the answers. All right. So students, we really do have to go through quickly because we are uh, less than 15 minutes to the end time. And so what I'm trying for us to do is to see if we can cover at least one more paper. And so while I understand, I'm asking you to try your best to keep up so that we can do at least one more. Okay, please try to see if you can keep up so that we can do at least one more. And we are doing, instead of the 2017 paper, we are doing the 2016 paper instead. I apologize for that. So let us look at the 2016 multiple choice paper here. All right. So we have to move through much quicker than we were with the first one because of the time constraints. Our time here ends at 12. Okay. And so we have to see how quickly we can move. And so I'm asking you students, please try to keep up. And I apologize for how fast we have to be going. All right, number one, 2016. Which of the following best describes a historical feature of the Caribbean? We have looked at this question before. We have answered this one before. And of course the answer is B. And as we have seen the questions before, some of these questions we have seen, then we can simply go through uh, much quicker than we were before 
Remember now we know the aim is not to have the questions written down and, and the answers memorized. The aim is to understand how we arrive at this question and to be able to, this response and to be able to justify your answers. Okay? We now move on to the next one. We have seen this question just now. One significant achievement of adult suffrage in Caribbean, in Caribbean societies is C. Oh, sorry. I apologize. Here it is that I have fallen prey to what I asked you not to do. We are to look at the question. The question we saw before asked you what was not an achievement out of adult suffrage. This is asking you for the actual achievement. So the answer then could not be C, but D, political enfranchisement. All right. Number three, number three says, which of the following best describes the near extermination of the indigenous people? We have seen this question before and the answer is indeed C, genocide. Four, which of the following weather systems is likely to affect the Caribbean during the period June to November? We have not seen this question before, all right? The answer to this question is C, hurricane. All right, we know that is June to November is the hurricane season. Every Caribbean national should be able to answer this one. Five, oceans and landforms are found on the subterranean feature of the Earth's crust. And they are called, that's number five, and the answer is B, the plate. Six, which of the following family types was introduced by the, to the Caribbean by the Indians? We saw this before, and the answer is C, extending. Seven, which of the following festivals is celebrated in Toronto? We saw this question before, and the responses are in the same row and the same way they were. The answer is A, Caribana. Eight, which of the following Caribbean culinary practices are influenced by the indigenous people? We saw this question before. And the answer here is one and three. The responses look different in this question. Cassarip and maize, one and three. That answer, that answer one and three, one and three only is B. Nine. Which of the following sports was used by the white planter class to demonstrate moral and racial superiority over their black subjects? And the answer to that is A, we have done this one before. 10, which of the following countries is located outside the Caribbean Sea? We have done this before, the answer is Barbados, C. 11, Garveyism is which occurred in the 20th century as an example of cultural renewal. We had explained how we arrived at that. B. 12. Which of the following aspects of Caribbean culture is least threatened by cultural erasure? We just saw this, this, this uh, question, and the answer is B, driving habits. 13. Mr. Polygon has been advised by the agricultural agency that he needs to minimize soil erosion. Which of the following methods should he use? The answer to 13 is A. We saw this, but the question was phrased a little differently. The answer is A, terracing. Which of the following measures was used by Caribbean people to challenge European domination during the 15th century? We saw this question before. However, the responses are not in the same way that they were. And the answer to that is still B, micro-level resistance. 15, Julia migrated, I'm sorry, went a little too fast there. Julia migrated to the United States where she works and sends money to her mother who takes care of her children. This money is known as remittance, that is C. 16, the age dependency ratio is 
best defined as a ratio of dependence to the working age population. All right, so we saw this before, but it, the question was phrased a little differently and the responses were also phrased a little differently. So once we understand that age dependency ratio is talking about where we're, we're trying to put together the number of people who are able to work and the number of people who are not able to work, any of the respondents that the, the responses that explain the, in that light, that is going to be the answer. 17, which of the following types of de development seeks to protect future generations? We have seen this on all three papers and that's D, sustainable development. Which of the following indices is not a measure of human development? Notice we're speaking about human development here, all right? So we have life expectancy, birth, death rates at C, literacy at B. The answer is A, GNP, because GNP is an economic measure, an economic indicator, and not human. 19, which of the following does not promote the development of a country? A, use of technology, obviously it does. B, class stratification. C, government policies, and D, entrepreneurial drive. And the answer is class stratification. It does not promote development. Which of the following organizations aims to regulate trade among countries? We saw this just now. And the answer to that is C, the WTO. Please note we are seeing more and more of the questions that we have seen before. 21. Which of the following actions demonstrate gender inequality? We have seen this question three times now. All right. And we this question, the question is now phrased as how we saw it. Uh, on the 2019 paper and not on the 2018 paper. The answer to that, 21, is still one and three, and it is at D. 22, which of the following is considered an element of good governance? We have seen this before as well. 22 is C, still C, rule of law. 23, soil erosion in the Caribbean is caused by monocropping, C. We have seen this one. 24. Which of the following, on which of the following was Sir Arthur Lewis's theory, industrializ industrialization by invitation based? And the answer is still A, direct foreign investment. Twenty-five. The mass media in the Caribbean is seen as promoting cultural imperialism because of. And there are a number of responses given here. We saw this one as well. The answer to 25 is B. B is one and a two only. And that was the same answer that we had on the 2018 paper. 26, which of the following is not an achievement of the OECS. And a central government is still the answer to that question. 27, the action of a government in diverting money earmarked for, the, for disaster relief to other projects may be considered. 27, the answer is C, corruption. 28, early 19th century writings from an indigenous perspective served to, this is the third time we're seeing this question, the answer is D, still D, rejecting the notion held by Europeans that early inhabitants did not have a history. 29, 29 is D, Pan-Africanism glorifies the past of the Africans and instills pride in African values as an attempt to all three, all three, unify Africa, regenerate Africa, bring glory to Africa, all of them. That is D. In its manifesto, a political party promised to improve citizens' welfare and ensure equal access to resources, which are the following best describes what the party is doing. Again, the answer is social justice at A, which are the following would not be a purpose of conducting research. We are at the research questions now at 31, as usual. The answer there is D. To, to gather data to support the researchers' agenda. We have seen this question before. All right, I am just going to give the responses. Okay, I don't think that will help us. So I will still just...
complete this paper. And then now we will quickly put up the poll and we will be in our wrapping up segment with uh, questions, any relevant questions. All right, 32, reliability in research refers to A, getting similar results after repeating trials. Thirty-three, an accessible population consists of D, those members of the target population who can be reached by the investigator. Right. Thirty-four, which of the following is not a characteristic of the research process? And the answer to that is D. Conformability. All right. Uh, 35. A uh, hypothesis may be described as, and the answer to that is C. Prediction of the outcome, if you will. All right. However, we know that the outcome may not be the same. You may end up changing all of what you began with at the end. 36, in research, the process of identifying a problem to be investigated involves A, uh, A, 36, A, and this is kind of a controversial question, very controversial because some persons may say it's reformulating a topic to make it feasible, but it says identifying the problem identifying the problem uh, so the answer i will have to revisit my answer and put b as the answer doing some kind of research in terms of in order to identify the problem 37 why is it important to clarify a research problem in the initial stage of the process, 37, and the answer is B, to provide a solution to the problem being investigated. All right, 38. Teenagers who bleach their skin have low self-esteem, which of the following accurately describes this statement? The answer is C a problem statement. 39, a researcher wants to conduct a qualitative study on traditional dances that are no longer practiced. Which of the following data sources would be useful? We had looked at this and the answer must include video footage and oral historians, but not the Bureau of, Bureau of Statistics. And so one and three would be C. 40, which of the following data collection methods is most suitable for gathering data? for quantitative research. And the answer to that, 40, the answer to that is C, individual interviews, most suitable method, quantitative research, 41. In collecting data for her research project, Michelle organizes a discussion for selected students from her school to get their opinions. What data collection method is that? The answer is still A, focus group. 42, which of the following methods may be used in a quantitative survey? That is B, questionnaire, quantitative. 43, which of the following is of least importance when refining a research problem? Refining the research problem of least importance, the sample size. We had looked at this before, however, the question was phrased just a little differently. Okay, 44, the findings from an investigation which used focus group discussions to gather data are best presented in the form of, 44 is still A, text based on the sheer number that you are 
looking at and the amount of information that you would need to collate. 45, Ravi thinks that the results from his research could be affected by the size of the sample. In what section of his research report should he explain this? All right. Uh, 45. Okay, the answer to that is C, the limitations and recommendations. All right, notice that this question or question similar to this usually ends each of these papers. All right, so we have gone to, to three of the papers, 2019, 2018, and this was 2016 paper. All right, now we do not know if the questions will be the same or if they will be completely a completely new field of questions or whatever it is, but whichever it is, it's obvious we still need to know the content. So that, that is our final question. And we are just going to wrap up now. And let me just wrap up by saying thank you. Thank you for being here today. Somebody suggested a part two. I, I'm not sure how feasible that will be, but I am happy for what we were able to achieve today. And I hear your concerns about how quickly we went along for the marathon. However, know that a lot of the questions were also repeated. We were going over some of them. And it would be a little bit tedious to go to, you know, go through so many of the papers in such a minute kind of way. I do hope though that you were able to grasp much from what we were able to do today and that you feel a lot more confident. At the beginning, I said to you that this was the aim of the, of the, of the workshop of the marathon. And I hope that you are coming out feeling a little bit more confident going into the exam. I also hope that you were able to understand clearly how you are to strategize and how you, to, you are to approach the questions and looking at the exam itself. I want to emphasize, to re-emphasize students that you need to know your content. It's not enough to simply memorize the questions and the responses because from what we have seen here, from the three different papers that we did, there is a lot of repeat of questions, however, we have also seen the questions being structured differently. We have also seen one word or two making a difference in the question. We have also seen different responses to the same question. And we have seen the same responses, but the responses are, are set up in different ways or placed differently in terms of A, B, C, and D. So that means that if you do not know your content, and if you really do not know the answer to the question, you could still be in a lot of trouble, all right? Let me wish you all the best students on your exam. It is my hope because there is no limit to the number of ones that CXC gives out. So it is my hope that many of you, in fact, all of you, who are here, who attended this marathon, are well on your way to receiving a one. Let me hope that you did well on your, on your SBAs as well, all right? And so it was my pleasure to have been here to share with you today, today and to help you to be a little bit more prepared for your exam. Let me wish you all the best and have a good afternoon. Thank you, Miss, for everything. You're most welcome.